Hello, Mr. Roberts. Thank you very much for taking the time. And I know that you're a very busy man, so I'll just get straight to the point. You probably heard about some kind of a backlash from the Afro-Latino community uh, regarding a movie in the Heights by the great Lin Manuel Miranda. Even though it made national news, the shock was um, <laughs> intense for an overwhelming amount of people, not just on the, on the American side, but also the Latino community who just didn't quite understand what the whole thing was about. What if I were to tell you, Mr. Roberts, that the backlash is, in my opinion, directly linked to one of the companies, uh, one of the TV network under your vast empire. Shocking. You have no idea. Look, Mr. Miranda himself had no idea the intensity, the level of racism that occurs within the Latino community itself. And given the ESG score that Comcast has clearly indicates your commitment to diversity. I want to show you something. It's the website for Telemundo showing the current list of um, talent, I guess, on their national programming. Let's see if you are able to catch something missing from that list. It's what I call silent racism. Hundreds of years ago, during the African slave trading days, as the ships arrived on the new continent, well, new to them, with their human cargo, they would actually find certain strategic locations, such as Cuba, uh, which served sort of like a warehouse would today for goods. So Cuba was perfectly located in terms of, of being in the center of everything. As Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. Uh, found out when he was doing a documentary called Black in Latin America, there were vast cells and ruins at this time, of course, but they were huge in which clearly hundreds and hundreds of slaves were kept. Now, as the orders came in, uh, from the United States, uh, the Caribbean, Central and South America, they would simply be shipped. So as the story goes, you know, it's the same. We all came in the same ship. We just got distributed differently. <laughs> as it always has occurred in history, that human quest for freedom sparked the first successful slave revolt in on Christmas Day, 1512, on an island next to Cuba, which is it was called the La Española. So word spread to the colonizers in the other parts of the continent about this revolt. But the colonizers found a new way on how to keep a hold, a grip of, on power, by bringing a very old and very successful tactic of divide and conquer. So came in colorism. If you were the color of a brown bag or lighter, then your life was going to be automatically easier. Your job would be in the house, uh, softer jobs and so forth. And if you were darker than the brown bag, life was going to be very hard for you. <laughs> life was going to be horrific. You, you were bound to do the, the hard work the hard labor outside and so forth. By the time I was born in that same island, a lot of families, not only there, but all throughout Latin America, had actually become mixed families. By the time I turned 16, I found myself living in the island of Manhattan. There was only one Spanish television station at that time, which was Univision, and uh, no blacks anywhere on their programming. And I thought, 
you know, maybe we had not been here long enough, which I was mistaken. Afro Latino have been here for a long time, which is the case for uh, Mr. Esteban Hostes, who came into the country as a young kid. And when World War II broke out, he actually enlisted and earned both his uh, commission as a second lieutenant as well as his wing uh, by becoming one of the Tuskegee Airmen. Someone else that you might actually know, Mr. Roberts, was a great baseball player, Roberto Clemente. <laughs> yes, from Pittsburgh. Remember Starsky and Hutch? <laughs> the original TV series? Huggy Bear? What's his name? Antonio Fargas. Yes, Afro-Latino. <laughs> As you know, Afro-Latino and, and sports. We've been there for a long time. Pelé? to a Mexican, Afro-Latino, yes, Mexican, <laughs> they're there, and they celebrate their um, African ancestry. I mean, El Duque, Pedro Martini, Big Papi, uh, Bernie Williams, just too many. Um, oh, oh, I cannot forget the closer, Mariano Rivera. And all along, there they were, the two Spanish networks. Zero blacks. They would definitely, you know, speak about Afro Latinos that were in the arts. So is Saldana, Juno Diaz. Uh, we also have uh, Rupert Vanderpoor, Gina Torres, uh, Laz Alonso. From time to time, I would think how ironic that Afro Latinos have been such an intricate part of the Latin American culture, yet we are not represented on the novelas, networks such as Telemundo. I mean, we've been here adding to the human experience for a long time. Perfect example, the king himself, uh, El Señor Ralph Mercado. <laughs> he was kind of like the Barry Gordy for us. This man brought so much joy with parties and, and, and so many different artists that went through his record uh, label that the impact cannot really be measured. Just too many artists. I'm just gonna mention one name, the queen herself, Celia Cruz. So I can go from the king to um, the genius, this young man uh, named Gabriel Cepeda, with brilliant ideas. One of them is a startup company that um, is so explosive that it made it to the New York Times, among other news organizations. Now, when it comes to politics, we can go from Ruben Diaz Sr., and his heart <laughs> to his son, uh, who have represented all of us uh, respectfully and proudly. So this incredibly um, energetic young lady named Pierina Sanchez, and this gentleman, uh, newly elected to Congress, uh, El Señor Richie Torres. Although members of the Latino community who are now Afro-Latino, you know, they may not even be aware that this is all happening. They, they watch telenovela and they see someone that sort of looks like them, or they watch their networks in Spanish and they see someone that looks like them. So for them, they don't even, somehow it doesn't come to their consciousness, the level of discrimination that exists. But for us, like, you know, Afro-Latino, yeah, we've talked about it for a very long time. Um, years ago, I created a, a community on Facebook called uh, Nosotros Si Existimos, which means we do exist. And I'm not the only one. Uh, you have other members of the community who've been talking about it, yet uh, the power that be within the community just pretends that see no evil, hear no evil, talk no evil. Just 
everything, the status quo, continue on. So, imagine, Mr. Roberts, what it must have been like for any member of the Afro-Latino community uh, when we knew that Mr. Lima Miranda was making a great movie about our neighborhood, where I've lived for so many years, Washington Heights, and probably half or even more of the residents look like me. And yet, when the movie comes out, there we are again, being marginalized, put to the side, back of the bus. And the stars, none of them look like us. And for someone like me, not only to find out that this is happening again, but that the people behind the movie had spent probably millions of dollars on Telemundo marketing the movie. So a movie where we are being marginalized, even about a movie about us in our neighborhood, and spending money on a television network that completely ignores our existence. It becomes a bit too much. I mean, so it's not about me, sir. It's about some 24-year-old kid cannot get a chance because of his features, the color of his skin, the texture of his hair, and that person deserves a shot at your network, just like anybody else. It's also about the next generation. For instance, there's a um, journalist on CBS News named Adriana Diaz. She's working her way up to um, top tier of journalists at the network. And not too long ago, she married this um, African-American gentleman. She's pregnant, about to have a beautiful child. That child, whether she is on the American side of the house or if she's visiting, you know, grandma, la abuela, who's watching telenovela and watching the news, that child deserves to see herself represented on both sides of the spectrum. That child needs to know that she belongs. It's about her. Not about me at all. Now, given your record on diversity, your excellent record, as I might add, in your Jewish ancestry, no one better than you to understand how racism and discrimination is lethal. It doesn't matter if it's public or if it's silent. It is equally lethal. In its least intense uh, form, discrimination is a killer of dreams. And in its most intense degree, it is a killer of people, of lives, by the masses. So, I think I have a good idea what you're about to do. <laughs> Please allow me to take um, this moment to thank you very much, not only for taking the time to watch me blah 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 my way through this video, but um, for also doing what I believe you're about to do by correcting this human injustice. I have zero power, but you, sir, you are power, and uh, you use it wisely. So, thank you very much, sir. And to everyone who actually watched, liked, and shared this video, and made this possible, <laughs> thank you. Eternally grateful. Stay blessed, everyone. And as I say, feed your mind with knowledge and your heart with kindness and everything will be fine.